NBC News Decision Desk projects Democrat Katie Hobbs has defeated Republican Carrie Lake in the race to become Arizona's next governor. Last night, NBC's Steve Kornacki explained how the call was made. From that point forward, Carrie Lake's campaign and Republicans were all saying, just wait till you get to the, the same day drop off. The mail-in ballots that people dropped off at the polls on Election Day. And again, there were 300,000 of them almost out of Maricopa County. And they said that's going to be what delivers this election to Cary Lake. That's what they said was that was, was going to deliver the Senate race, they claimed, to Blake Masters. And we've just had three or four days now consecutively of updates that have included those ballots. And every time we've gotten them, the numbers have just not been there for Carrie Lake. So she was already in a position where she was, you know, she was throwing a Hail Mary pass here and she just did not get what she needed. A uh, former local news television anchor turned right wing superstar Carrie Lake's embrace of former President Donald Trump launched her to the forefront of the far right's grievance politics. Lake has been claiming fraud since before winning her primary in August and has continued to sow doubt in the general election. Last night, after NBC News called the race for Hobbs, Lake tweeted, quote, Arizonans know BS when they see it. Yes, they do. Well, that was just that's uh, sort of a cell phone. She, um, that she just, sets herself up as a straight man to all of Arizona. Yeah, by, by you should that, have seen the that's, tweets in yeah. response to that. Yeah. Uh, we'll just leave it yeah. there. We'll, we'll, we'll leave Harry's it there. very mad. I, 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 I will. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty remarkable. So, so Sam Stein, um, the Washington Post was reporting <laughs> last night that over the weekend, Carrie Lake's team set up a war room. And the idea was to prepare her for this loss, hoping these people who obviously wanted her to have a future in politics, that she wouldn't follow Donald Trump's script, that she wouldn't, do, you know, come out and say the sort of things she said last night regarding election denying. Um, and it just looks, you know, who knows, maybe she'll be at Mar-a-Lago tonight. Uh, but it's hard to believe that any politician that wants a future in the Republican Party or any party would embrace election denying when you look how this was the most fertile ground politically Republicans were ever going to have. If you look at inflation, you look at the economy, you look at Biden's approval ratings, you look at gas prices, and yet the election deniers all rejected outright. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a remarkable slate of defeats uh, in a cycle that should have been theirs by historical standards. Um, you know, there's a couple takeaways you can grab here. One is election denialism simply does not sell, especially if you're running to have a key input and oversight over your state's elections. I don't think voters are very comfortable with the idea that you might destroy faith in democracy, simply put. The other thing that I've taken away is that you know, sort of traditional politics actually does matter, right? A lot of these candidates who were put up for office had never actually interacted one-on-one -on -one with voters. Now, Lake may be an exception because she was a local TV anchor, but a guy like Blake Masters had never really spent time with, you know, local union halls or local voters or trying to win office before. Herschel Walker, similar situation. This is a case where you actually want to have institutional knowledge of your state, of how democracy works, of how to meet and greet voters to turn them out. And celebrity candidates, yes, it worked for Trump, but maybe it doesn't, maybe it cannot be replicated in every single state going forward. And that might be the lesson that the Republican Party takes from this, is that we need to get back to the basics. Well, and, you know, we've been saying this time and again on this show that, that everybody thought after Ronald Reagan won two landslide victories, they thought, oh, Reaganism, it's transferable to the next candidate. And that, no, it's not. People have, like, there have been people, and Mike Pence is the latest example, who have been really bad imitators of what Ronald Reagan did and how he cocked his head. And they thought, think that there's some magic. If there's not, it wasn't transferable. Barack Obama's coalition, not transferable. And the fact that Donald Trump can do what Donald Trump can do because he was a celebrity, because he fought with the New York Post and the Daily News and the New York Times uh, throughout his entire life and figured out how to brawl with them and, and, and come, well, I won't say come out on top, but just to survive mm -hmm. day in and day out. Blake Masters doesn't know how to do that. And I mean, Carrie Lake, okay, Carrie Lake was pretty good for what she did, but you know, 
Being a local reporter in Arizona is a little different than, than getting hammered by the New York Post and Daily News every day if you're Donald Trump. The skill is not transferable, though Carrie Lake, again, was better than, uh, than, than most of them uh, in her political skill set. Um, Adrian, I think that what makes this such a... Um, such a stinging loss, I would think, for Carrie Hobbs. Carrie Ke Lake. Carrie Lake <laughs> for Donald Trump, uh, for people who expected her to win, is what Democrats were telling me a month out, which was Katie Hobbs, she's not the strongest candidate. Everybody, you know, I say that when I say something like that on the air, I don't say it on the air unless I'm hearing it from a ton of Democrats in Arizona. And they said, she's not that strong of a candidate. She won't debate. We're trying to get her to debate. She won't go out on the campaign trail. She, 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 she's, she's in hiding. And Democrats were very concerned about it. And I say the morning after, she won. Uh, Carrie Lake lost. And I think that is the ultimate rebuke to Carrie Lake and the denialism. Even when you have a candidate that's not doing all the right things, that's not debating, that's not taking the campaign to the people of Arizona the way Democrats wanted her to, Carrie Lake still lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, Joe. And look, you can debate. We could debate all day whether or not she should have debated. Um, but whatever her strategy was, it worked. And, she won. you know, and she won. Exactly. She won. And she won by, you know, it was a close race, but she won by a relatively, as far as, you know, races in Arizona go, a pretty comfortable margin, as we saw last night. We'll see how the rest of the votes come in um, that are the few that are remaining. Uh, but, but look, I mean, I think Sam made such a really good point, which is a lot of voters are just want to get back to the basics. They want to have um, elected officials who represent them that um, are, are uh, you know, understand the state and have done all the work and have moved their way up through the system. Um, they don't, they're not looking for the flashy star. They're not looking for, you know, the Donald Trump acolyte. I think that's what we saw here in Arizona. We certainly saw it across the country in different, in different races. And, you know, you look, Joe, at the trajectory from 2016 uh, when a lot of uh, the American voters said, we don't want um, an establishment candidate. We don't want someone who has served in public office for a long time. And you watch where we are now going back to 2022. It's almost like the pendulum has swung back to um, a desire and a need for people who have actually had experience, who have, have served in public service before, um, who know their state very well, who know their constituents, and who are most importantly in it for the right reasons. So Jonathan Swan, in her attempt to mimic Donald Trump at every turn, Carrie Lake curiously made a closing argument that included ta attacking Arizona Republicans. She said, we don't have any McCain Republicans in here, do we? This was November 4th. This is a closing argument at a rally. All right, get the hell out, she said to McCain Republicans. <laughs> Arizona has delivered some losers, haven't they? Calling John McCain a loser. And here she is at Jeez. CPAC back in August saying something along the same lines. We may have won this battle, and I won an epic battle in Arizona. We drove a stake through the heart of the McCain machine. Well, Jonathan Swan, that's one way to try to win statewide, to attack an American icon and a hero in the state of Arizona and the very set of voters you are going to need to win a close election. And you can see that because uh, Republicans down ballot have done better than her. But right. this is sort of puzzlement among Carrie Lake allies, you know, they're sort of like... How could this be? How could this be? We're looking at the numbers, and it seems that these fairly anonymous, milquetoast Republicans down ballot are outperforming us. How on earth? Well, there are still some McCain Republicans that live in Arizona. And she told them, was it, get the hell out. Um, oh you can God. understand that, just from a, forget ethics, morality, whatever. Just from a tactical point of view, you can understand that in a Republican primary in Arizona, there's a very energized Republican base in that state which, which despised John McCain. But to use that then in a general election, let alone four days before the election, it just makes no tactical sense. Uh, so, yes. And I just can't, just what people were talking about before, I can't overstate to you how much the Trump um, 
Trump world was banking on Carrie Lake. She was their star. She was someone that they saw as potentially a, a vice presidential pick, uh, potentially someone who could succeed him, run for national office, run for president down the track. She was someone that they put a lot of chips into, and, and Trump world was fully behind her. His allies were campaigning for her. And so this is a really stinging loss for them, more so than actually any of the other gubernatorial losses across the country.